Mr. Jones, so you must fasten your seatbelt. We're in turbulence. All right. Insurance. What? What? Seatbelts are required by our insurance. You work for the airlines? No. The airline works for me. Oh, you're that guy. What is it they call you? The pirate of Wall Street. I prefer acquisition specialist. Yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> Well, you bought yourself a good company. Well, according to these, I've bought an inefficient company that's bleeding money. Well, why did you buy it? So I could break it up and sell it, plane by plane. But I've flown this airline for 50 years. What about the people that work for you, the pilots, that stewardess down there? I buy and sell companies, sir. I'm not running an employment agency. And according to these figures, it's going to take me longer to get my profits out. Figures? We're talking about people's lives here. You don't understand. Let me explain. No, no, no. Hold on. No, 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 no. You, no, you listen to me, uh, Sully. You know, you remind me of someone I met in the First World War. I enlisted in the Belgian army under an alias. They made me a courier, and before I knew it, I was at the high command of the French Second Army. That were done. One of the worst battles of the war. We are going to retake Fort Wilmore. We attack here, the north side. We attacked the north side three weeks ago. What is the purpose of the new attack? Purpose? The men will be rushing into machine guns and artillery uphill. One would hope that you have a purpose in mind. Sir, Commander-in-Chief Joff. That is, gentlemen. I don't have much time. I'm expected at the ballet. Politicians, you understand? The reason I'm here is to discuss the problem with our communication network. General Shaw. Don't protest, General. Your telephone lines have been destroyed by German shells, and your couriers are infiltrated with German spies. I've dealt with the problem, General. New couriers. Belgians. Belgians? They are an inferior lot. Can you depend on them? Why don't we see what they can do? I'd like to send someone with an order to attack Fort Wilmot. Fort Wilmot. An attack on the north side. I have no objection. I will await the results. Monsieur le Maréchal. Yes, General? You can't authorize another attack from this position. I just have. Just like that. An attack of this magnitude must be planned to the last detail. This is not a recommendation. I insist upon it. You insist? I expect your support, General. Thank you, General. I start the artillery barrage immediately. Dispatch to the front, Major. Give it to one of the new Belgian couriers. You were chosen to replace Petain because you are not reluctant to attack. Don't let me down, Nivelle. Succeed. Who's the fastest of the Belgians? The new one. Him. Rides like the wind. Corporal!
Turn on bark. In the bunker. Yes, Major. That's right. Not in a week. Not in two weeks. Tonight or tomorrow. My men need new boots. At ease, Corporal. From Second Army Command, sir. Oh, no. to the trenches is down. Are you a fast runner, Corporal? Yes, sir. What's happening, sir? The guns you hear are ours. The attack must begin when those guns stop firing. The enemy will have time to recover. If the enemy has time to recover, they will slaughter my men. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Report to Major Gaston. You've got to get there before the artillery stops. Bark, sir. in Marseille. This is her picture. The address is there. Take this to her. Hold on. I can't take it.
How many? Approximately 600. Confirm that. Take this back to headquarters. That figure will go up. Welcome to Verdun, Corporal. From sector four, sir. Go then. You're dirty. Clean up and get downstairs. You'll miss your supper. Yes, indeed, General. <laughs> the report of Franz Sector 4, sir. How much ground was gained? None, sir. What's that, Major? I thought you said none. I did, sir. Tell Colonel Bach to have himself in my office at 6 a.m. That will be all, Major. Yes, sir. How many men did you lose? Obviously not enough. Leaving, General? The main course hasn't arrived. I've had enough. I'm expecting you later, General. I'd like your contribution. So I hear you went to the front. Yeah. Not so nice, is it? No. This is an ugly war. At least not the word for it. Truth is, I still can't figure out what this war is about. Nobody knows what it's about. It's simple. The Germans invaded Belgium. Your homeland. So they could invade France, your homeland. What about Russia? Don't forget Britain. They're on our side. <sighs> Look. France is on the left. Russia is on the right. The sausage is Germany, okay? Now, this is Austria. The potato is Belgium, and the beer is Britain. Here, we have Serbia. Now, when the Archduke of Austria is assassinated in Serbia, Austria threatens to invade Serbia. What about Germany? Germany, as an ally of Austria, declares war on Russia and ally of Serbia. But we're fighting in France. Yes, indeed we are. France declares war to Germany and Austria because of their alliance with Russia. What about Belgium? Ah. Belgium. When Germany went to attack France, Belgium wasn't on the way. And Britain didn't like that, so they joined against Germany and Austria. Right. So we're fighting to protect Serbia, a tiny country no one's ever heard of. That's what this war's all about? Dear Ned, Interested to hear of your struggles against the Turks and Germans in the Middle East. I'm at a place called Verdun. 
This trench warfare is hell. The men either run straight into machine gun fire or wait for the next artillery barrage to drop on them. They're like animals being led to slaughter. And I can't understand. I can't understand why. Get it out. It's still in there. It is not still in there. I can't feel it. You have to operate again. Private, control yourself. Restrain him. No! 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 Stop! He's a danger to himself and others. No, he's not. Let me talk to him. Be better, my friend. Yes. Is that German? How did you? One of the prisoners. I traded some chocolate. You're a genius. Did the surgeon really leave it in? Remy. Remy? Trenches. They'll send me back if I feel well. So I'm not going to feel well. I'm not going. Really listen to you. you have to let it heal. If you make it worse, they'll find out and you'll end up in front of a firing squad. A food? This is charge! And a charge! Together, okay? Okay. I'm all right. I have to go now. I'll come back as soon as I get a chance.
here for the ammunition order? Yeah, a couple of things. Henry Defense. I'm Sergeant Jean de Mille from Cannes. You're Belgian, huh? It's all right. I won't hold it against you. Glad to make your acquaintance. Do you know anything about guns? Every healthy young man loves guns. Hey, come on. Yeah, a rail-mounted 320-millimeter howitzer. Fires a 100-pound shell. It can reduce your average German infantryman to a quivering pile of mince Wienerschnitzel in half a second. <laughs> but it's nothing compared to the big one. The what? The big one? Yeah. Big Bertha. Who's Big Bertha? <laughs> Not who. What? The Krupp howitzer. He's German. The meanest cannon ever made. It takes over 100 men to load and fire it. <sighs> and she fires a 2,000 pound shell. 2,000 pounds? Yep. Enough TNT to blow this place to the moon. Here you go, Corporal. Do the Germans have big berthas here? No, 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 no. They might someday, and then... <laughs> See you later, Sergeant. Hi, Rocco. Alex. As I was saying, we have a specific need for men who speak German. Do any of you speak German? I thought Belgians had a reputation for language skills. I repeat, do any of you speak German? Uh, I speak German, sir. It's called Bol Defense, isn't it? Yes, sir. Be in my office in two hours. Why did you tell him you speak German? Because he asked. And because I do. Why? What's the problem? They just need an interpreter. You've got a lot to learn, my young friend. Ich habe mich in London gemeldet und sah die Aktion im Norden. Obwohl ich als Korporal in der Belgischen Armee diene, freue ich mich sehr, dass ich unter der französischen Kommandatur eingeheit bin, Es ist mein Pflicht, die französischen Armee, die Deutschen auszutreiben, zu helfen. That's ich enough. You and Boston, Corporal. Your accent is excellent. Thanks. It's noble for you to volunteer for this. French army will be indebted to you. Indeed, entire French people will be indebted to you. Are you sure you want to do this? I guess so. What is it you want me to do anyway? We're 150 meters across. Stay low, don't be seen. Find the command bunker and listen for anything about troop movements or attacks. Right? Call for One other thing. Germans don't take spies alive.
I'm shot in the legs and stomach. I can't walk. How long have you been here? Oh, yesterday, I had a visitor, but I took care of him. I'll get you out. Don't leave me. I'll be back. What the hell is it doing? Oder über ihre Dummheit lachen. Du hast dir das gehört? Kaporal! Feldwebel! Schauen Sie mal raus, was da draußen passiert. Jawohl. Ah! Aufpassen! Mein Schwager hat gestern Abend im Casino zwei Generale plaudern gehört. Kanonen kommen heute Abend an. Und morgen sollen wir der französischen Armee zwei schöne deutsche Mädchen vorstellen. Und die heißen... Die Gilberta! <lacht> How did it go? The Germans are bringing up artillery, sir. I don't need a spy to tell me that, Corporal. You better listen to him, Colonel. They're bringing up two big berthas. What? Come with me right now. Are you certain of what you heard? Yes. No exaggeration? No. I mean, no, sir. They're repeating the same story three times. Why would he lie? I didn't say he lied. I asked if he exaggerated. Corporal Defense, you are a Belgian, hmm? Yes, sir. And you were recruited for this mission when? Yesterday. I recruited him, sir. I am not talking to you, Colonel. You realize that traitors are shot, Corporal? Yes, sir. It's ridiculous. It's clear he's telling the truth. I am ordering 
a new attack. You don't mean that? Yes, General Peter. I do. You're not even going to investigate this? Two big howitzers, out of the blue. Why would the Germans do it? Why now? It is inconceivable. I am not going to waste my time. General, with all due respect... With all due respect to you, Colonel, I am ordering you to return to the front and prepare for an attack on Fort Douaumont. I am sick of your whining. That will be all. And get a haircut! You will excuse me. I have a breakfast engagement. You may not have time to verify the boy's report, but I do. If those guns are there, and the men attack, they will be cut to ribbons in five minutes. We can put that in your report, General. Troops going back to the front. Hello, Indy. Off to the front again. About the other day at the hospital. Thank you. What for? Cigarettes. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. Something built up. All your bail men got orders. I have to go. Take care of yourself, Remy. The pictures are clear. These are Krupp Howitzers, 2,000 pound shells. That will be all, Major. Aerial reconnaissance is my province, General. I can order air reconnaissance when I think it necessary. In this case, I thought it was. I believe new orders are needed. For what? To cancel the attack, of course. You are going to cancel the attack? We've already begun our bombardment. What? I have orders to attack. Nivel, with those guns there, our men have no chance of success. The casualties will be 90%. If you let this attack go, knowing those guns are there, you are committing murder. You do it then. You call off the attack. Send in Mitchell Murrah. Take this to the front immediately. Yes, sir. like the shelling stopped. It 
sounds like the shelling stopped, Nivelle. Yes, it did, sir. It's not time for the attack yet. No, sir. Then why are not the cannons firing? The attack must be supported by theory. Yes, I understand that. The reason why is because I ordered them to stop. I also ordered the attack to be cancelled. You did what? I cancelled the attack. Nivelle, you're the commander of the second army. Did you agree to this? I... Well, uh, yes. Your office now. I'm not interested in excuses, Nivelle. Ordered an attack, I want an attack. Get me Colonel Bark. Colonel Bark. This is General Joffre. I order you to resume the attack. I won't, sir. What? I won't because I can't. I'm the commander in chief of the army. I'm giving you a direct order. And I am staring at an order canceling the attack. A written order signed by General Pétain. A written order can be changed only by another written order. If you really are commander in chief of you you'll understand who is you wrote that regulation. I want you to prepare for an attack. A written countermand, signed by me, will be arriving immediately. Take this to Major Gaston. Tell him not to prepare for an attack, but wait until I give further orders. to the sector four as fast as you can. They've ordered the attack to continue. With the big guns. They can't. Unfortunately, Corporal, they damn well can. I don't care about your reconnaissance, General. What possible military objective will be gained by this? There are bigger issues than this attack involved. You could hardly understand. Fort Douaumont is a symbol of national pride. The public was shaken when the enemy captured it. When the public is shaken, the politicians have a problem. When the politicians have a problem, I have a problem. Is that clear enough for you? It's all too clear, General. Any orders from command arrive? Not yet.
Well, the orders never got there. Nobody ever found out what I did. The attack was delayed, and 10,000 men lived a day longer. The French finally retook Fort Duamont. There were 20,000 casualties. As for old General Pétain, he hated politicians because he thought they had no concern for human life. But after the war, Pétain became a politician himself and had a hard time indeed living up to his own moral code. Nivelle resigned and died a bitter old man. His problem was that he couldn't understand the consequences of his actions on the little guy. So don't end up like him, bub.